So in today's episode we're going to look at drawing the skull, how to apply the musculature over the skull from the shoulder height upwards, um, and we'll also look at how those basic shapes translate into drawing the skull. As a disclaimer, last week I should I should have given um, homework or some sort of task to do. Um, yeah, I'd say if you can, try to light these different objects from different um, lighting positions. So, like with the sphere, what would happen if I move the light here? With the cube, what would happen if I move the light here? With the donut, what would happen if I move the light here? And so on. Okay, so getting into the skull. So I'm gonna demonstrate with this how we use the basic shapes to build up um, the structure of the skull. So, start off with our sphere like shape. I always try and find the center line of the skull, so that's where you've got the nose ridge, and then find the center line of the eyes to indicate the direction in which the skull is actually looking. And then We've got like our cylinder shape that connects onto the bottom here. So sphere, center line, cylinder shape. Those are like the main things that you need to know. Um, and then if you think of the skull in terms of like a uh, as like a rudimentary fashion. Uh, kind of as like a cube so you know if lights coming from here less lights gonna come from from this side um, that's only really in terms of lighting uh, a rough way to go about thinking about it um, but yeah three main things sphere center line cylinder so let's go apply those things um, yeah we'll do this one so I've drawn the sphere gonna do the center line remember like the edge of the cylinder it isn't actually right along the edge it's pushed in just a bit because of the zygomatic bone that you've got that's sticking out so like I'm drawing the cylinder shape gonna draw it about there and I can already tell that this is too big so I'm gonna squash it down a bit um, but yeah that's normally what I'd go for as a base uh, now like I've just turned down the opacity um, of the sketch layer I've created a new layer and I can sketch over what I've already started so I'm just drawing the eye socket here 
and then as I said you've got that zygomatic bone that slightly sticks out and then when you get to the cylinder uh, where you've got the mandible, the teeth um, and the maxilla when I say that I mean Mandible, teeth, maxilla. And you're going to imagine that there's like a protrusion happening. So find where your teeth are protrude outwards and then at the chin it comes back outwards again I'm just gonna draw like a mini section to enter to show the protrusion of the teeth I guess one way to show this is just to go like this. But you can imagine. That the wire frames kind of like that, if that makes sense. But yeah, I'm gonna go back to where we've got the teeth. Mm. Right now, that's looking too big because I've drawn the initial part wrong. Um, Okay. So I'm going to do the eye sockets now. And I'll move back over to where the teeth and the mandible are. And you can see that in this side view, the nose cavity opens, uh, well, overlays with the eye socket. This isn't the best score in the world either, so. But we're just trying to have an understanding of the skull so that we can have a better understanding of how to draw the human face. If you want to think about them this way, you can, but just imagine that you're just drawing on sunglasses. Okay, we're going to go back down. Well, actually, no, we should talk about this before I go back down to the mandible. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have this uh, zygomatic bone 
um, which is just below the temporal bone. Temporal is going to be, you know, sometimes I think I should just have this up so I can show you what I mean as I'm going along. <laughs> Yeah, so that's going to be a zygomatic. And then temporal bone is going to be just above. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm looking at when I say you have the zygomatic bone. So it is kind of like sunglasses, but you have like your mini. bone sunglasses here and once you have the edge of this then you can get the zygomatic bone um, So once you've got that um, zygomatic bone receding backwards, you can draw in the edge of the mandible because um, it connects up to that. And you normally have like this mini ridge here, and like around here's where the like the ear would sit. Um, Ah, I see the problem. Okay, so it's clear to me that I made this too wide. And yeah. It's going to be, yeah, so with that, with the mandible, comes down from where you had that zygomatic bone. You've got like this mini cavity where you've got nothing, and then you've also got this one sometimes. Uh, and just remember that it's in at the chin, or right in the, yeah, in at the chin, back out for the teeth, back in, where the mandible bone is, and then you're going to have that zygomatic bone protrusion here. And by no means would I say this is the best skull. <laughs> I'm making a huge amount of mistakes. I need to uh, slightly raise this up. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just pinging my eye back and forth between the reference. And also squinting to see where the shadows actually are. Oh, 
machin. Ok, so. Yeah, when you get to here, you get to the brow ridge. The brow ridge just comes back in a bit. Come up and curve back round. I mean, you can think of the brow ridge as like a triangular, uh, elongated shape, kind of like that. You can think of the brow ridge kind of like that. So, you know, if we we're going to light the brow ridge. The light's going to hit this side, and the shadow's going to be right here. But you can kind of think of the brow ridge like that. And it's kind of the same thing, you know, for where the nose is as well. Like, if the light was coming here, maybe it would light the top and this side, but this would be in shadow here but you kind of get the gist um, of how we, we're using um, the information from how we draw the basic shapes to how we light the skull but we'll move on to lighting the skull a bit later Just gonna distort this down. Well, no, not the whole thing. It's kind of just. What parts is it? It's just this whole part here. Yeah, and so there. We've got our first, we've got our first skull. And kind of as I was saying, uh, you know, if we we're going to go about lighting this, I mean, we can try it and then move on to the next one. Um, and I'm going to draw a few skulls. Because it will help with, um, yeah, with understanding how the skull's built up. So it will help with creating, uh, drawing the skull from imagination, and also drawing the skull from reference, and then painting portraits and drawing portraits. Um, so yeah, if we're gonna like this. Um, same sort of thing. As I said in the last episode, um, I'm going to get a mid-tone. I'm going to start a new layer as well. I can put it underneath the drawing layer. You know what? We'll do that. A uh, new layer. Okay, already. First thing to do find the direction the light's going. I can see it's coming from this side. Um, remember how we did sphere. cylinder shape but then also because the skull's fragmented in 
disjointed we can also kind of and I don't mean fully because it's a rounded shape so you have to consider how the sphere is shaded but you can also kind of think of this in terms of a cube so if we take all those things into uh, into acknowledgement well if we acknowledge all those things um, then I grab this midtone go more or less halfway to black I'm just going to shade along these edges here. No. We're about this cuz we've got some rim, rim light and bounce light coming on this side. And then put some shadow here because if the light's coming from that area and we're thinking of this in terms of like a triangular prism it's not going to hit this side and also this side's going to be lit in shadow as well And I wouldn't say I always get it right either. But you, you kind of get the gist of how we're lighting the skull. We're thinking about... Um, oh no, I've drawn it. <laughs> I did it on the drawing layer. Okay, let me go back and, and start again. Oh, I, I guess it will be extra practice. <laughs> Oh boy. But yeah, we're thinking about how that light is impacting the shape. So, as I was just showing earlier on. We think about this like a triangle prism and like as like a wireframe shape we know that you know this side is going to be receiving less light if, if we're thinking about this in terms of like a cylinder but this bottom half Let's go halfway to light. I'm just going to light the area that's receiving light. Well, that's closest to the light, so it will receive more light. Yeah, so that's just some rudimentary shading. Not even complex. We haven't even gone into smudging or anything or or doing anything technical. We've just done the thing where we say one, two, three. Shadows, midtones highlights 
No, no, we, we can get him to smudging. Uh, so all I'm going to do here is just soften, soften the intensity of the shadow. And all while I'm doing this, I'm trying to think about the wireframe and the form of this. So I'm trying to think about, remember that triangle brow ridge, the fact that this is a cylinder-like shape, but protruded slightly outwards. Like, I'm trying to remember all of those things. Just drawing in that bounce light that's coming in on the other side and if I really squint then I can see which areas are, are darker so or I guess which areas you can emphasize so I'm gonna go slightly darker and I'm gonna go into where the temporal bone would be. Oh, I need to rub that out. Wait. It's not that. Okay, it is on that layer. So you can see I'm going slightly darker. Mm, emphasizing that dip or change in the planes, I guess. If I wanted to emphasize it more, I can just add a bit of contrast. To the edge. Of that. All I did was take a bit of the lighter area, sketch in over the edge and smudge it. So the same sort of thing down here. If I squint, it feels like the darkest area is here and right here over the teeth as well. This side of the teeth, yeah. So I'm just going to take a mixer brush Smudge that in And, um, 
yeah so we've got like our skull like shape what I can do is I can merge the two together and I can go into this eye socket now and really try and blend that out a bit darker and what I'm doing is just squinting looking at the areas that are in shadow and comparing it to my uh, my own painting and seeing where where I can emphasize more so I can definitely emphasize a bit more in the eye socket and this eye socket as well and this nasal cavity as well I guess we can do the teeth. We can do the teeth as well. Uh, I guess the interesting thing I was shown about the teeth. Huh? Uh, if you. So let's just say we lightly shade over area of where we're going to put in the teeth. We take a lighter, whitish color, and if I shade back in, like this, just small ridges. can see it kind of starts to make the look of teeth and then if you take a darker color or your darker yeah I guess your darker color on on your thing and you just use that above to be honest I don't know if I've really done this right or not just above and below where the teeth are and then let's take our mid-tone And there we kind of got our teeth. It's not the best. But you, you kind of get the gist. I guess. Get a bit lighter. I can emphasize this just a bit more. So it's here a bit more, here, and that. Well, that's pretty much our skull done. 
and that would be how to draw a skull. <laughs> I'm not going to end it here. We're going to do a few a few different examples, and then we're going to look at the bones and the muscles. But um, yeah, that's an example of how you kind of take your understanding of the basic shapes and then translate it into the skull. Um, like try and think of it in terms of like a wireframe. So I mean, I've showed this multiple times, but I feel like it is invaluable. Uh, and I'll leave it as like the wireframe kind of version that I'm trying to show. Got like our cubish kind of shape. We've got like our triangle kind of shape. You can think of this as like a curved plane. We've got a plane in itself here. But yeah, if you start to think of it in terms of wireframe, it will help you shade the image. Actually, no, I'll go back. Well, what I can do is I can copy. I'll copy it. I'll head back and then paste it. So what I'll do and put this up here. Just so they're roughly the same size. And I'll put that there. Okay. So I'm gonna move on. Um I think what I'll do is we'll do two more skulls and then we'll name the different bones and things and then we'll look at muscles. So I'll get the two kind of views that we want. Uh, we'll look at the side view and a more or less front facing view. I recommend that um, in your own time you try and study some of these skulls and identify, well once I've shown you the different bones, identify some of those bones and how those bones um, can help help you in your understanding of the skull's structure and drawing the skull. So same thing here, you see we go for a center line. I mean, in this view, I can just do, assume they're kind of like that. Uh, let me just, I'm cutting this and pasting it again so I can fade it out. Add a new layer, and now we can look at the structure of the skull. So, I'm gonna start off with this dip where you've got the nose, and 
Which also shows us where this eye socket is. So that eye socket. It's going to be right here if we've put the nose there. If you remember what we said about um, the brow ridge comes in and then goes up and comes back round. We can do this nose as well. Um, kind of like a diamond shape. I guess you could consider that the nose, you know, okay. Because they go back out. Those kind of does the same thing, just on like a shorter slope. This is for the skull though. Um, and remember once you've got the eye socket, you've got that zygomatic arch. The zygomatic bone. Okay, we can do the area where the maxilla is, remember, out for the protrusion, we get to the teeth, it's coming back in, uh, it's going back out. It's like, I don't know whether I'd, I'd say in the middle of the, of where that maxilla is, but it's kind of like to the very, I guess to the very back, or close to the back of the maxilla, not maxilla, the zygomatic bone, is where you have that, um, the attachment of the mandible. Remember you've got like this indentation here. Uh, we're gonna have where the T fall. Feels way too long. <laughs> I'm gonna have to just, uh, yeah, mostly just, it felt like it's been stretched too much, and when you're drawing, you, you'll do corrections all the time, um, or you'll have to make corrections all the time, there isn't really a time where you get it fully right all the time. And you just train your eye for observation and drawing and sketching a lot. Okay. Is our side view. Mm. 
and turn that off now. I'll do the front view as well. Um, problem is I never really know how long I've been recording for. <laughs> So I'm weary of how long I'm making this video. Uh, so I'll do the front. Uh, this is probably better. But I also want the teeth connected. Uh, we'll do this, we'll do this one. So doing the front view now, same sort of thing, sphere, a cross line to indicate where uh, the center is. Mini cylinder kind of thing there. And I'm just using that base as like a template to sketch over. So I guess if you were doing it traditionally, you could just sketch it out lightly and then draw over the top to start. Okay. So where am I going to start? Uh can start at the Zygomac arch. Problem is this one, I should have picked a better photo. But I'm kind of just going to go off my knowledge. I've got already to make up well to somewhat make up the rest because it is kind of is the same kind of structure for all skulls That nose cavity. Got that eye socket. Yeah, so just getting in the eye sockets. Mm. And then just going off my knowledge. Uh, so like, uh, so just to talk about this, right here, it's like a Mac bun that sticks out. Got the mandible, um, it's like a Mac arch that goes down into uh, the teeth, well the way the Mac is that so goes down into the teeth. Um, and then you see how we've got this side part where you've got the Zygomac bone and the eye socket. It's kind of that's repeated on here by doing this, so that's just represented by that by this kind of like shape. Um, you 
can do the same on the other side more or less. And you can see, okay, although the other half is in shadow, like, the, the skull kind of just repeats itself. So there you go, you've got one and two. Uh, so now we can look at, uh, yeah, naming the bones. Just gonna turn this off, gonna move this down, gonna move this across. So we've got enough space. Uh, I'm gonna sketch in, right here I'm just sketching in spine. got your collarbone and I guess on this one Spine. Collarbone. Got like that shoulder blade shape. Mm, I guess we can do one. Uh, we could do one more. Uh, and I genuinely just say to uh, draw along. Like, okay. Yeah, to draw along, because uh, you'll learn um, how to go about doing it. Uh. Uh. Where that maxilla is. That shape there. Got where the T4 comes back out. Um, I can just draw the edges of that right there. Yeah, I'm just going to use that as a rudimentary shape to show the very back. And then I'll move on. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. 
so we're gonna look at naming naming the bones so just create a new layer so we've got frontal let's do this in another color let's go into red we've got our frontal bone right here we've got temporal bone right there um, nasal bone uh, maxilla and it's not as if I know all of this off by heart I know some of it <laughs> and then I, uh, every time I, I, I want to go back and learn I've got like a, a diagram where I drew it all myself um, from some other tutorial or thing um, that I kind of refer back to as reference um, so I'd recommend keeping it all this as reference so that you can see what all the bones are called and then just come back to it every now and then when you want to know what bone you're, you're talking about um, how's best to represent this peripatea oh mm. Parital, parital bone. Occipital bone. Right at the back. Uh, I should have shown this, but uh, you've got like a uh, it's not <laughs> <laughs> it's not good oh. I don't know whether I can show it that well. Ugh, either way. Basically there's a breakup of like the different sections on the head that show you what's the occipital bone, the parietal bone, the frontalis, or the frontal bone. Um but continuing on, uh, so yeah, mandible, uh, and then we've got that zygomatic bone. Yeah, and then just the... Collarbone. Yeah, and then you've got your cervical spine. That's about it, really. Um, those are the bones that you need to know about. So I'm going to move on and I'm going to show how those translate into muscles. So we've got our bone version, our 
Oh no, I drew, I drew on it. No, <laughs> no. It's not the end of the world. I'll copy. Turn that off. Turn that off. And paste. Rubbing it out. Yeah, because now I'm going to show you where the muscles are and what the muscle names are. And then I'll think I'll, I think I'll end it there. Um, and I'd recommend... Um, that if you want to practice some of this in your own time then uh, yeah then try and uh, get a bunch of pictures of skulls and try and sketch some of them out and try and um, paint some of them as well um, just like I did with the initial skull and you do um, one, two, three, shadows, mid, mid tones, highlights, um, and you think about the wireframe and how that informs the lighting and where the lighting is coming from. Okay, let's look at muscles. That's better. I can go purple. We could do the light bluish color here. By no means are these perfect drawings. <laughs> it's, it's more just to get a point across. More than anything. Uh, shift a bit to red. Go. Can go pink here. Anything else? Uh, I can do that in yellow, I guess. What other colors have we got? <laughs> And 
Okay, I think that is all of them. So, I'm just going to sketch out what these are now. <laughs> Small frontalis. It's where the um, frontal bone is. Temporal. Those are the three small muscles at the ear. Well, just above the ear. Um, yeah, I guess then you got the ear, this mass of cartilage, uh, orbicularis, it's the muscles that control the eyes, um, you've got a nasal muscle, Right here, um, and then you've got sternocleidomastoid. That big neck muscle. Uh, you've got the trapezius. Another big neck muscle. And then you've got the in. In six, uh, right here, and then finally you've got a uh, zygomatic major and minor. <sighs> That controls the mouth. Um, Orbiculus oris. And then you've got like these small muscles here. Orbiculus oris. So like th those are the muscles um, to know as well. Um, so the next episode we will look at, um, yeah, sketching the face, uh, and how those muscles apply to sketching the face and what areas to look for in terms of the skull on the face and the muscles on the face, um, and then we'll look at drawing like a collective of portraits and things so that we can look at improving our ability to draw the face. Yep, so see you in the next episode.